Section twelve of Tales of the Jazz Age by F. Scott Fitzgerald. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Don W. Jenkins. Mr. Icky, the quintessence of quaintness in one act the scene is the exterior of a cottage in west isaacshire on a desperately arcadian afternoon in august mr icky quaintly dressed in the costume of an elizabethan peasant is pottering and doddering among the pots and dods he is an old man well past the prime of life no longer young from the fact that there is a burr in his speech and that he has absent-mindedly put on his coat wrong side out we surmise that he is either above or below the ordinary superficialities of life near him on the grass lies peter a little boy peter of course has his chin on his palm like the pictures of the young sir walter raleigh he has a complete set of features including serious sombre even funereal gray eyes and radiates that alluring air of never having eaten food this air can best be radiated during the afterglow of a beef dinner he is looking at mr icky fascinated silence the song of birds peter often at night i sit at my window and regard the stars sometimes i think they're my stars gravely i think i shall be a star some day mr icky whimsically yes 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 peter i know them all venus mars neptune gloria swanson mr icky i don't take no stock in astronomy i've been thinking a lunnon laddie and calling to mind my daughter who has gone for to be a typewriter he sighs peter i liked Dulce, mr icky she was so plump so round so buxom mr icky not worth the paper she was padded with laddie he stumbles over a pile of pots and dods peter how is your asthma mr icky mr icky worse thank god gloomily i'm a hundred years old i'm getting brittle peter i suppose life has been pretty tame since you gave up petty arson mr icky yes yes you see peter laddie when i was fifty i reformed once in prison peter you went wrong again mr icky worse than that the week before my term expired they insisted on transferring to me the glands of a healthy young prisoner they were executing peter and it renovated you mr icky renovated me it put the old nick back into me this young criminal was evidently a suburban burglar and a kleptomaniac what was a little playful arson in comparison peter odd how ghastly science is the bunk mr icky sighing i got him pretty well subdued now tisn't every one who has to tire out two sets of glands in his lifetime i wouldn't take another set for all the animal spirits in an orphan asylum peter considering i shouldn't think you'd object to a nice quiet old clergyman's set mr icky clergymen haven't got glands they have souls there is a low sonorous honking off stage to indicate that a large motor-car has stopped in the immediate vicinity then a young man handsomely attired in a dress suit and a patent leather silk hat comes on to the stage he is very mundane his contrast to the spirituality of the other two is observable as far back as the first row of the balcony this is rodney divine divine i'm looking for old sir icky mr icky rises and stands tremulously between two dods mr icky my daughter is in london divine she has left london she is coming here i have followed her he reaches into the little mother of pearl satchel that hangs at his side for cigarettes he selects one and scratching a match touches it to the cigarette the cigarette instantly lights divine i shall wait he waits several hours pass there is no sound except an occasional cackle or hiss from the dods as they quarrel among themselves several songs can be introduced here or some card tricks by divine or a tumbling act as desired divine it's very quiet here mr icky yes very quiet suddenly a loudly dressed girl appears she is very worldly it is ulsa icky 
on her is one of those shapeless faces peculiar to early italian painting ulsa in a coarse worldly voice Father, here i am ulsa did what mr icky tremulously ulsa little ulsa they embrace each other's torsos mr icky hopefully you're coming back to help with the ploughing ulsa sullenly no father ploughing such a bather i'd rather not though her accent is broad the content of her speech is sweet and clean divine conciliatingly see here ulsa let's come to an understanding he advances toward her with the graceful even stride that made him captain of the striding team at cambridge ulsa you will say it would be jack mr icky what does she mean divine kindly my dear of course it would be jack it couldn't be frank mr icky frank who ulsa it would be frank some risque joke can be introduced here mr icky whimsically no good fighting no good fighting divine reaching out to stroke her arm with the powerful movement that made him stroke of the crew at oxford you'd better marry me ulsa scornfully why they wouldn't let me in through the servants entrance of your house divine angrily they wouldn't never fear you shall come in through the mistress entrance ulsa sir divine in confusion i beg your pardon you know what i mean mr icky aching with whimsy you want to marry my little ulsa divine i do mr icky your record is clean divine excellent i have the best constitution in the world ulsa and the worst bylaws divine at eton i was a member at pop at rugby i belonged to near beer as a younger son i was destined for the police force mr icky skip that have you money divine wads of it i should expect also to go down town in sections every morning in two rolls royces i have also a kitty car and a converted tank i have seats at the opera ulsa sullenly i can't sleep except in a box and i've heard that you are cashiered from your club mr icky a cashier divine hanging his head i was cashiered ulsa what for divine almost inaudibly i had the polo balls one day for a joke mr icky is your mind in good shape divine gloomily fair after all what is brilliance merely the tact to sow when no one is looking and reap when everyone is mr icky be careful i will not marry my daughter to an epigram divine more gloomily i assure you i'm a mere platitude i often descend to the level of an innate idea ulsa dully none of what you're seeing matters i can't marry a man who thinks it would be jack why frank would divine interrupting nonsense ulsa emphatically you're a fool mr icky tat tat one should not judge charity my girl what was it nero said with malice toward none and charity toward all peter that wasn't nero that was john drinkwater mr icky come who is this frank who is jack divine morosely gotch ulsa dempsey divine we were arguing that if they were deadly enemies and locked in a room together which one would come out alive now i claimed that jack dempsey would take one ulsa angrily rot he wouldn't have a divine quickly you win ulsa then i love you again mr icky so i'm going to lose my little daughter ulsa you still got a house full of children charles ulsa's brother coming out of the cottage he is dressed as if to go to sea a coil of rope is slung about his shoulder and an anchor is hanging from his neck charles not seeing them i'm going to see i'm going to see his voice is triumphant mr icky sadly you went to see it long ago charles i've been reading conrad peter dreamily conrad ah two years before the mask by henry james charles what peter walter pater's version of robinson crusoe charles to his father i can't stay here and rot with you i want to live my life i want to hunt eels mr icky i will be here when you come back charles contemptuously 
why the worms are licking their chops already when they hear your name it will be noticed that some of the characters have not spoken for some time it will improve the technique if they can be rendering a spirited saxophone number mr icky mournfully these vales these hills these mccormick harvesters they mean nothing to my children i understand charles more gently then you'll think of me kindly feyther to understand is to forgive mr icky no no we never forgive those we can understand we can only forgive those who wound us for no reason at all charles impatiently i'm so beastly sick of your human nature line and anyway i hate the hours around here several dozen more of mr icky's children trip out of the house trip over the grass and trip over the pots and dods they are muttering we are going away and we're leaving you mr icky his heart breaking they're all deserting me i've been too kind spare the rod and spoil the fun oh for the glands of a bismarck there is a honking outside probably divine's chauffeur growing impatient for his master mr icky in misery they do not love the soil they have been faithless to the great potato tradition he picks up a handful of soil passionately and rubs it on his bald head hair sprouts oh wordsworth wordsworth how true you spoke no motion has she now no force she does not hear or feel roll around on earth's diurnal course in someone's oldsmobile they all groan and shouting life and jazz move slowly toward the wings charles back to the soil yes i've been trying to turn my back to the soil for ten years another child the farmers may be the backbone of the country but who wants to be a backbone another child i care not who hoes the lettuce of my country if i can eat the salad all life psychic research jazz mr icky struggling with himself i must be quaint that's all there is it's not life that counts it's the quaintness you bring to it all we're going to slide down the riviera we've got tickets for piccadilly circus life jazz mr icky wait let me read to you from the bible let me open it at random one always finds something that bears on the situation he finds a bible lying in one of the dods and opening it at random begins to read ahab estimo and on him gosen and olen and gilo eleven cities and their villages arab and ruma and esau charles cruelly buy ten more rings and try again mr icky trying again how beautiful art thou my love how beautiful art thou thy eyes are dove's eyes besides what is hid within thy hair is as flocks of goats which come up from mount galad hm rather a coarse passage his children laugh at him rudely shouting jazz and all life is primarily suggestive mr icky despondently it won't work to-day hopefully maybe it's damp he feels it yes it's damp there was water in the dod it won't work all it's damp it won't work jazz one of the children come we must catch the six thirty any other cue may be inserted here mr icky good-bye they all go out mr icky is left alone he sighs and walking over to the cottage steps lies down and closes his eyes twilight has come down and the stage is flooded with such light as never was on land or sea there is no sound except a sheep herder's wife in the distance playing an aria from beethoven's tenth symphony on a mouth organ the great white and gray moths swoop down and light on the old man until he is completely covered by them but he does not stir the curtain goes up and down several times to denote the lapse of several minutes a good comedy effect can be obtained by having mr icky cling to the curtain and go up and down with it fireflies or fairies on wires can also be introduced at this point then peter appears a look of almost imbecile sweetness on his face in his hand he clutches something and from time to time glances at it in a transport of ecstasy after a struggle with himself he lays it on the old man's body and then quietly withdraws the moths chatter among themselves and then scurry away in sudden fright and as night deepens there still sparkles there small white and round breathing a subtle perfume to the west isaacshire breeze peter's gift of love 
a mothball the play can end at this point or can go on indefinitely end of section twelve read by don w jenkins rancho san diego california shaggybark.blogspot.com